So while staying in Genova, and shortly before we went on our day trip to Milan, Anna got word from her company that there were some work opportunities that would take her to Rome and Milan over the course of a few days. She asked me if I would like to come along, and at first my mind was racing with excuses. I have a ton of videos to edit, I'm going to get super behind on uploads, we'll have to buy an extra train ticket and pay for extra accommodation. Then I snapped out of my moment of insanity and realized that I was going to be able to go visit more stuff for more, 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 everything more. Who was I kidding? Of course I wanted to go to Rome and Milan again. So yeah, remember back in our very first video when I said this? We arrive in Rome without a scratch, but this is merely a landing point. We've briefly been to this city in the past and would love to spend a lot more time here in the future, but that is not something currently in the works for 2023. Yeah, no. Apparently we were fitting in some time for Rome this trip. Not gonna complain. Back when we visited Italy in 2015, we sadly did not get to visit a tiny little country inside of Rome, which apparently has some sort of spiritual significance to something like 2 billion people on the planet. So, to this place it was. The entire first day, and the only day I was going to be able to spend with Anna, we decided to peruse the Vatican City. Like a lot of our travel, we took a train from Genova to Rome. So, once again, we had to get up early to make it. Once we got to Roma Termini, for some reason I was really craving cornetos and cappuccino. I'm not really sure why. We didn't get any though, we had places to be, people to see, anarchy to commit. The day was grim. If you've paid any attention to international news for the past few weeks, these were the days of torrential rains in Italy that flooded a lot of the Emilia-Romagna region. Thankfully, Rome was unscathed. We took the subway from Termini to a station near the Vatican and head on over to see the majestic walls towering above us. And, of course, the inevitable hordes of tourists. Yes, I know, I'm one of them. We make it in through one of those skip-the-line type of deals that just get you inside, but don't actually guide you or tour you through anything. We prefer it this way, we hate not going at our own pace. I immediately start recording everything I see, and Anna tells me that if I do that, we're gonna be here for three days. Muttering obscenities under my breath, I realize she's right and start being a bit more conservative with my SD card space and my extra batteries. I hate it when she's right, which is never, by the way. <laughs> Either way, we get to see a whole bunch of really cool stuff. After walking around for what seemed like hours, we started getting somewhat hungry, so we decided to find the Vatican food court and get a bite to eat. I'm not proud of what you're about to see, but it's not like there's a wide array of gourmet options. To be quite honest, it wasn't that bad at all. It was greasy as hell, but pretty tasty. I've definitely had a lot worse. I can't remember if it was the pamphlet we were given by the tour people that got us in or something we read, but we were under the impression that the Sistine Chapel was going to close at a somewhat soon time, so we decided to book it straight there. And by that, I mean calmly stroll through a bunch of areas while more or less making our way to it.
We slowly but surely see more and more crowds forming as we progress, and notice everyone turning into lemmings just being herded in a specific direction. It was pretty clear we were getting into Sistine Chapel territory. Now, in the actual space of the Sistine Chapel, you are not allowed to take any photos or video, and there isn't just one security guard to yell at you if you break the rules, there are like 20 watching over everyone. So, unfortunately, you will not be seeing any footage of the Sistine Chapel in this video. Nah, I'm kidding. What kind of bootlicker do you think I am? Thankfully, in this fascinating modern age we live in, stealth photography has never been easier. A couple of tweaks and settings changes, my display screen goes dark relatively fast, and all the red recording indicator lights are off as well. <laughs> I'll be honest, the ceiling is pretty cool, but all the security employees yelling at people, hurting them, and treating them like crap was kind of a buzzkill and ruined the whole experience. I don't know if they were having a bad day or what, but there were some examples I sadly did not manage to record of the security berating the tourists that were completely uncalled for. I reiterate though, cool ceiling. We continue on with more cool Vatican stuff. Outside, in the small garden, there was a sign pointing us in the direction of an underground area with papal carriages that have been used throughout history. So we decide to take a gander. Maybe the Pope has used the Cinquecento at some point in time. Who knows? Oh, they got it. The old carriages were pretty cool, and there were a few more modern cars, but sadly no white papal Cinquecento. No worries, unlike Milan where I have yet to see one, the first day in Rome provided me with not one, but two old Cinquecentos. At this point, we felt like we were kind of done with the Vatican Museum and wanted to see if we could make it to San Pietro, so we took the cool, windy stairs down to the exit and started heading that way.
Once we got there, it was immediately apparent that we would either have to wait in line for over an hour, or not even be able to make it in before closing time. Biting the bullet, we sadly give up on seeing the inside of St. Peter's and make our way to our hotel to finally check in and go out for a bite to eat somewhere. But not before stopping in front of Castel Sant'Angelo, people watching for a while, meeting a fearless seagull, and having a couple of beers next to the Tiber River. After checking into our hotel, we walk around a bit to find a nice place to have dinner at. We find a decent enough place where we had one of the best bowls of carbonara I've ever tasted, a couple of other dishes that were good enough, and some delicious tiramisu. All in all, a pretty good day. A pity about San Pietro, but there's no reason to think we'll never be in this part of the world again after we leave, so no use getting hung up about it. Either way, tomorrow is another day, and in this video universe, Anna has a bunch of work stuff to do tomorrow, so I get to explore Rome alone.